Hello everyone and welcome to my Destruction Warlock Guide. My name is Pyromancer um, in the Guild Vulgar on Sargeras Alliance side. And uh, today I'm going to be showing you the basics and some in-depth things about the uh, Destruction Warlock. Now this is the Warlock spec that I'm most acquainted with as it's the Warlock spec that I've gained the highest ranks with back in Tier 16, etc. Um, but let's just jump right into this, man. No reason to, uh, to wait. And we're going to start off with talents and your specialization. Destruction is basically a fire warlock. It's like a badass version of a fire mage because they get to summon demons, you know, things like that. They have a, a pretty crazy move called Chaos Bolt. We'll get into that. So just starting off, the four basic rotationary spells for a destruction warlock are here. Immolate, which is your dot, uh, Conflagrate, Incinerate, and Chaos Bolt. Now, how these moves work in conjunction with each other is, is very simple. Immolate is just a 15 second dot that you put on your target and it helps you generate burning embers. Now really quickly, burning embers are your main resource as a destruction warlock. You use burning embers to cast shadow burns, use burning embers to cast chaos bolts, and if you use fire and brimstone to cast AoE versions of those spells, then it consumes burning embers as well. Okay. Um, Conflagrate is an instant cast uh, ability, um, and it will snare the target by 50% if, if, if the target's already afflicted by Immolate. This is a very, very important move, because how conf Conflagrate works is it generates you backdraft stacks. And how backdraft works is, with each Conflagrate that you have, and you start off with two, and they're on a 12 second recharge, each Conflagrate that you use gives you three stacks of backdraft. Now, stacks of backdraft affect Chaos Bolts, and they affect incinerates. That's it. Some people seem to think that they affect immolates. They don't. So basically how a backdraft stack works is when you cast an incinerate, it, it consumes one stack of backdraft. And we're going to go into the spellbook right here and, and take a look at backdraft. When you cast conflagrate, the cast time and mana cost of your next chaos bolt or next three incinerates is reduced by 30%. This move, even though it says it includes chaos bolts, should almost always be used to generate burning embers through incinerate. So say you conflagrate two times. Okay, we're going to do that. I have six backdraft stacks. I can either Chaos Bolt twice to see three of them went away, or I can Incinerate three times with very, very quick cast time and generate embers. So that said, there are many, many ways to enhance your ember generation. Now we're going to start off with um, an Immolate, okay? Just watch this Immolate tick. It'll just slowly generate up embers. If I emulate two targets at the same time, it's going to go up even more. And it's a slow generation because it's a dot. I mean, you, you're not supposed to be able to just emulate everything and get full embers. There we go, full ember. Okay, so emulate's very important. And then your conflagrate stacks come back. You should always use them on incinerates. So we're just going to generate some burning embers here. See? Uh, your main primary... Um, ember generation spell is going to be incinerate. Um, anyway, back to the rotation. Incinerate is just a basic spell, deals fire damage and generates burning embers. Chaos Bolt. This, this is your big hitter. Unleashes a blast of chaos, causing 25,707 shadow damage, scaling with your crit. Um, chaos Bolt always critically strikes, uh, excuse me, and your uh, critical strike chance increases its damage. So destruction warlocks don't function like other classes do. Destruction Warlocks, Chaos Bolt damage, and any Ember consuming spells um, are scaled up with Mastery and Crit. So Critical Strike, because it increases your Chaos Bolt damage, is actually a, a very, very good stat for Destruction Warlock. Mastery is also very good because it increases the effectiveness of burning Ember consuming spells by a percentage based, and increases the damage of your Emulate Incinerate Conflagrate by a percentage based. So Mastery effectively increases all of your damage. No matter what you're doing, it's increasing your damage. Whereas Critical Strike only buffs the amount of Chaos Bolt damage that you do, essentially. That's the most important part about it. Um, back to the rotation. There, this is the basic rotation. Okay, You also have a spell called Reign of Fire, which is just an AoE spell. Pretty, pretty weak. And with um, Warlords of Draenor, they actually nerfed it so that... Uh, it doesn't generate burning embers anymore, and they gave it a huge damage nerf. 
So this spell is literally only going to be casted when you're moving, like, because you can't cast things while you're moving. See? So while you're moving, maybe throw throw that down, you know, if you have can flags, you might want to use them while moving. Very, very simple. Um, and then most of the other things are going to be talent-based. Now, if you play a Warlock, you already know about your Summon Doom Guard and things like that, Shadow Fury, Soul Shatter, stuff like that, I would hope. Your Fears, your Banish, all that stuff. Um, most of that stuff isn't used in PvE. Fearing and Banishing, unless you're doing challenge modes, really isn't ever used. You got your Soul Stones and, soul and things like that. So we're going to get into, t into Talents real quick. And then I'm going to go into the specifics, because there are some very, very important things that I haven't gone over yet. So for your tier 1 talent, it's pretty much up to you. I wouldn't take Searing Flames, because even with Searing Flames, your Ember Tap is pretty garbage. Um, Soul Leech is a really nice one if you don't take bursty damage. Um, it, your Incinerate Shadow Bolt and Chaos Bolt, Shadow Burn and Chaos Bolt, uh, grant you and your pet a shadowy shield that absorbs 15% of the damage they dealt for 15 seconds. That's a really, really nice passive. Uh, Dark Regen, just 20% heal, and increases all healing received by 25% for the duration over 12 seconds. Um, the, the second tier... Level 30 is kind of up to you. It's pretty situational. I like Shadow Fury. It's the most useful in PvE uh, by a fair margin because there's quite often AoE packs that, that could be stunned. Um, Soul Link is very nice when used in conjunction with Grimoire of Sacrifice. Now let me explain this real quick. Dark Bargain and Sacrificial Pact are absolutely choices that you can that you can go with. There's no reason that you can't. The reason I choose Soul Link is because 20% of all the damage taken is split with your pe Demon Pet and 3% um, of damage you deal heals you and your demon pet. <clears throat> now, you guys may have noticed, I don't have a demon pet. And this is because I'm using Grimoire of Sacrifice. We'll get to that in a second. Um, for your level 60 talents, Burning Rush is pretty much the only way to go in PvE. Unbound Will is basically a trinket. You don't really need that um, in PvE. And Blood Horror is a fear that causes melee attacks to fear things that hit you. Burning Rush is just your, your movement speed. Very, very good. Um, though it does hurt you a little bit, it can be out-healed. Definitely out-healed. Okay, now we're getting into the more important talents. These are the talents that actually matter. Let me just go through them in order. Grimoire of Supremacy is your demons essentially become stronger. They get 20% more damage, and their abilities are a little bit more powerful, and they will also take on a different form. This is very good for many situations. It's, it's, it's probably the way to go in PvP, I almost never use it in PvE. Um, Grimoire of Service is getting a buff in 6.1, which drops tomorrow. I personally have never really liked Service. It's just an, it's an extra button to use, and I, I don't know. I just don't like I just don't like how it works. And then we get to Grimoire of Sacrifice. Now, this is probably going to be the way to go in 6.1, because it sacrifices your demon to gain one of its abilities and increase the damage of your Incinerate, Chaos Bolt, and Shadow Burn by 20%. Does not apply to spells affected by Fire and Brimstone. Um, and it also increases your maximum health by 20% and causes you to regenerate 2% of maximum health every 8 seconds. Um, and it lasts for a while. Now this is getting buffed another 5% tomorrow in 6.1, so that it increases the damage by 25%. And this is very important because this, used in conjunction with Soul Link, will grant you 20% more health. Now that's because you don't have a pet, obviously. So it's just going to give you 20% more health instead of having that damage split with your pet. This is really good because it gives Destruction Warlocks a very, very high health pool, makes it easier to survive in a lot of certain situations, and it makes your single target damage very, very good with Grimoire of Sacrifice. As for the level 90 talents go, um, that's kind of up to you. I mean, uh, most of them are pretty garbage, but Archimonde's Darkness is pretty much the way to go. Um, it gives your Dark Soul two charges, and Dark Soul is your main... DPS cooldown. It infuses your soul with unstable power, increasing your critical strike chance by 30% for 10 seconds. So basically, my Chaos Bolts are going to hit 30% harder while that's active, because it's giving me 30% more crit. Um, and like I said before, the way destruction works is crit just straight up scales up your um, Chaos Bolt damage. Kill Jaden's Cunning is being reduced to a 30 second cooldown. Um, in 6.1, and the cutting of Kill Jaden allows you to move while casting Warlock spells for 8 seconds, castable while casting other spells. If you have Hunters in your raid, you don't need this. Like, I'm sorry to say, if there's any moment where you actually need to use Kill Jaden's Cunning, a Hunter's probably going to Fox anyway. So, I never take this. Pretty useless. Uh, Manor of Sphere increases the area of effect by 500%, and the damage of 100% for Seed of Corruption, Hellfire, 
an Emulation or in Reign of Fire for 10 seconds. You don't ever really use Reign of Fire, so that's a pretty much wasted talent. Uh, Archimonds Darkness is just far too valuable. Now, these are probably the most important ones. Charred Remains, Cataclysm, and Demonic Servitude. Charred Remains is technically viable in a few situations, though I have never personally tested it out. I just don't like the idea of it. I, I, don't, I don't like how they designed it. It could have been very, very powerful, and they balanced it to a point where it's kind of meh, like you don't really need it. Cataclysm is far better in AoE. Cataclysm conjures a Cataclysm at the target location, dealing a shit ton of Shadow Flame damage to all enemies within 8 yards and applying Immolate to all targets. This is very, very, very strong at AoE. Because if you have a big pack, that's not going to go down too terribly fast. You hit them all with Cataclysm, it does a shit ton of damage and applies your dot to all of them. Now mixed with the Destruction Warlock 2 set bonus from Blackrock Foundry, when Immolate deals damage, it has a 4% chance to generate a full Burning Ember. That is insane. Because if you can immolate like 10 targets at once, each time your immolate ticks, it's going to be a 40% chance that you're going to get a full burning ember. That's insane. And that is very, very useful. The force set is also very nice. It's when a burning ember is filled up, you have a chance to cause your next chaos bolt in multi to multi-strike three additional times. Now, that said, with multi-strike, let's go into the um, stat priority for destruction really quick. The stat priority for destruction in my opinion, because many different stat priorities work, is Intellect, Mastery, Multi-Strike, Crit, Haste, Versatility. You don't want versatility for any spec as a Warlock. It's pretty awful for pretty much all of them. So you, you never want to have versatility, and unfortunately I have a lot on my gear. Um, back to the Towns. Demonic Servitude, you are now able to maintain control over your Greater Demons indefinitely which is your Doom Guard in Infernal. This can be very good for single target. If you're going to do a single target boss, going with Grimoire of Supremacy and Demonic Servitude is probably the way to go because your, your demon will actually do a fair amount of damage. Um, AoE, I would, it's, it's viable to go uh, Supremacy with Cataclysm. It's, if there's Burst AoE, it's definitely viable to go Grimoire of Sacrifice with Cataclysm. Um, it's kind of just situational. Not as situational as Demonology, thank God, because Demonology is a very situational spec. But it is still relatively situational. Let's go into Glyphs really quick here. Your Glyphs are kind of your choice. If you're leveling, I would recommend Glyph of Dark Soul. Reduces the duration and cooldown of Dark Soul by 50 seconds. There's not really a reason to use this as destruction because you want your Dark Soul to last longer because you need to generate embers and spend embers while it's up. So there are some situations where it could be applicable, but personally, I just kind of use it when I'm messing around. Um, Glyph of Havoc. I don't actually recommend using this, so I actually need to take that off of that because apparently I'm in combat. Because um, it increases the cooldown of Havoc by 35 seconds, but only gives it three additional charges. So let me explain to you how Havoc works really quick. Havoc is a spell that causes your next two Chaos Bolts or six other single target spells to also strike this target. That's when it's glyphed, okay? It would only be one Chaos Bolt or three single target spells unglyphed. It has a 50 second cooldown while it's glyphed and a 15 second cooldown unglyphed. So you can imagine why this would be very, very powerful unglyphed. Because if you think about it, you're only getting three more charges for almost almost quadrip, quadruple the cooldown. If this were 60 second cooldown, it would be only, only three more charges for quadruple the amount of time. So unglyphed every 15 seconds, you can Havoc your target and then Chaos Bolt another target and it will hit them both glyphed i can do it twice but the trade-off is look how long that cooldown is that's pretty insane that's a pretty big cooldown right there so i'm not going to be able to use that for quite some time uh, let me demonstrate how cataclysm works you just put it out there it's going to strike all these targets and put the emulate on them so i'm going to reapply emulate to both of these and show you how strong the two set bonus for destruction actually is We'll just give it a second, and it's a, it's a fairly low percentage, so on two targets, I wouldn't imagine that I'm going to generate very many Burning Embers. But we'll see, really quick. We'll see if I can, if I can pop one up here. <clears throat> Havoc is a very, very important spell uh, in all situations, because there are times where there's two targets at very high health, where you want to Havoc both of them, or Havoc one of them, and Chaos Bolt the other one. There is also a situation where you may want to Havoc one, and then Shadowburn, low health enemies. Now Shadowburn is your um, execute, essentially. 
and instantly blasts the target below 20% health for 38,422 shadow damage and generates burning embers if the target dies within 5 seconds. This spell consumes, consumes one burning ember and will generate um, two burning embers. So if I, sh if I shadow burn um, a target while I have one burning ember and it dies, I will get two burning embers back. This is very, very, very powerful because if you can utilize Shadowburn and Shadowburn adds and things like that on fights that are very low health, you can generate a large amount of embers relatively quickly. And if you Havoc onto your main target and then Shadowburn on your off target, which I can't because it's not in execute range, it will do a lot of damage between them. That is a very, very, very valuable spell. And you need to utilize this pretty much on cooldown. Havoc is a very important spell for you. Um, as far as your other spells go, it's things like Summon Doomguard, which either should be used in, a, in an execute phase, um, when the target is below 25% health, or when you're using Bloodlust, because, as I said in my Demonology Guide, your Doomguard does benefit from this. Um, lastly, and very importantly, you have this spell called Fire and Brimstone. Now, while Fire and Brimstone is active, you have to have, you have, to have a full Burning Ember, so let me just generate a full Burning Ember real quick. Okay. You have to have a full burning ember to turn it on, and while active, it causes your immolate, incinerate, and conflagrate to consume a burning ember, hit all enemies within 10 yards of their target, and deal 51% of their normal damage. Um, this is going to do less damage, of course, because you're hitting everything. If you were to hit everything within 10 yards for maximum spell damage, that's, that's going to be a lot of damage, so it's, it's nerf there. Also, it's very, very important that you note that Grimoire of Sacrifice only increases your single target spells. It says right here, does not apply to spells affected by a Fire and Brimstone. So if it's going to be a fight where you're going to be using Fire and Brimstone a lot of the time, don't use Grimoire of Sacrifice. Just go with Grimoire of Supremacy instead, or, gr or perhaps Grimoire of Service if you like that playstyle. Um, if I fire and, uh, fire and Brimstone this guy with a Conflag, it's going to hit him too. If I... Uh, let me just get an ember back real quick. Okay, if I emulate this guy, it's going to emulate him too. There it is on him. So this is a very, very powerful spell. Um, one way that you can very much utilize this, especially in conjunction with your set bonus from Blackrock Foundry, is to turn on Fire and Brimstone and emulate all the targets and then turn it off. If there's enough targets, you will literally never run out of Burning Embers until the targets are dead or until Immolate falls off them. That's how powerful that two-set bonus is. And if you play Destruction Warlock, you know that the more Chaos Bolts you can milk out, the more damage you're going to be doing. Back to the Glyphs really quickly. Um, another very useful one is Glyph of Hellstone. You receive 100% more healing from Hellstone, but the health is restored over 10 seconds. This is technically more stronger... More stronger. Wow. This is technically stronger than... Um, a health tonic, because it heals more. Although it is a dot, it will heal more overall. Um, there are a bunch of other glyphs. Most of them aren't worth mentioning. Soul consumption is you restore 15% of your total health after you kill the target with Chaos Bolt that yields experience or honor. In most cases, you're going to be killing the target with Shadow Burn, so that's pretty irrelevant unless you're one-shotting things. Your uh, Glyph of Life Siphon, Siphon Life, your Emulate spells will heal you for 15.35% uh, of your maximum health um, when dealing periodic damage. This is pretty good, although it is a very, very low amount of health. And Glyph of Conflagrate, this is very good for PvP especially. Conflagrate no longer requires Emulate to snare its target, so no matter what, if you hit an enemy with Conflagrate, they're going to be snared. That is very, very powerful in kiting situations and in PvP for sure. Now, um... This is That's the general overview for Destruction Warlock. Some things to be noted is some add-ons that are very, very useful. Aftots. If you do not have aftots, you can configure it for Affliction, Demonology, and Destruction. This is That's not just for Affliction, even though it says aftots. Um, that is this bar right here in the middle of my screen that shows me how long the Immolate is lasting on my current target. That is very, very useful. Um, probably one of the most useful add-ons that I have. Weak auras is what I use to track all of my trinket procs, and if you see here, I'm going to just pop everything really quick. And uh, you can see that the weak auras are popping up to display my buffs up here that I'm not going to look up into the corner to see. 
Um, another very, very useful add-on to track the timers on the unit frames of your target is OmniCC. That's what I use to display these timers here. Um, this is also a weak ore that shows the cooldown on my Havoc. Very, very important. My Ember bar is Galvin's unit bars configured in a way that allows me to have it just kind of simple and easy to see in the middle of my screen. I use Bartender to configure my bars, um, Bagnon, of course, and Shadow Unit Frames. Everything else is, is fairly generic on my screen. Um, and then Scada, of course, because please, if you're using Recount in PvE, stop doing it because you're it's, it's not as good. Trust me, it's just not as good. Please don't use Recount in PvE. Please use Scada. Recount may be better in some situations than PvP. Not the case in PvE in pretty much any situation. Um, that pretty much covers it. Uh, I can do a gameplay guide if you guys would like to see that. Uh, if you would like to see that, please, please, please put that in the comments. I'm definitely willing to do that. Uh, I did record this video at 540p instead of 720p because I found 720p to be a little bit hard on my computer. Um, and I, I think that this is pretty fair looking as it is. So if you have any questions or comments or any anything really, please feel free to put that in the comment section below. And I hope that this helped you guys out. And um, yeah, thank you very much for watching.